it starts with Isaac Newton. And he wanted to figure out why planets like Earth go around the sun like this. So my hand is going to be the sun, and the Earth is going to be that ball over there. And he figured that the reason was is that there was some sort of pull from the sun to the Earth. What do you call that pull from the sun to the Earth? Gravity, that's right. So the reason why he thought that was if there were no gravity, <laughs> the planet, they, they would, Earth, Mer Mercury, <laughs> Venus, Earth, Mars, they would all fly out in all sorts of directions. And so he said to himself, there's got to be some sort of connection here. Because if there were no connection, it would go flying off. Here was the problem. He couldn't figure out what that rope was. How many people here know that there's not really a rope between the Earth and the Sun? How many people knew that? Okay, none of the adults realize that. <laughs> but it bothered him what that, what is that string? The idea of force, excuse me, uh, of force at a distance, he hated. Einstein came along, and as I was mentioning in the other room, he started from scratch. He said, the only thing that you actually see is the motion of the planets. Is there another way totally to get the same motion of the planets in a, in a totally different way? Anyway, Einstein said, I imagine that there is a higher dimension, and in that higher dimension, it's curvy, and that planets move in that higher dimension, and they think they're going straight in that higher dimension, but because that dimension is curvy, when you look at it from our dimension, it looks like a planet going around the star. And everybody said, Einstein, what are you talking about? <laughs> what, are you, are you, what have you been drinking, Einstein? <laughs> what you, so let me show you what he was uh, uh, talking about. What the main idea that I want to get across is that this stuff on the screen, I'm going to call the normal dimension. The normal dimension in, in reality is three-dimensional, but on the screen it's two-dimensional. And I'm also going to be talking about a higher dimensional space-time, which in reality is four-dimensional, but here it's a two-dimensional surface. This shows what it would look like if you looked from straight above. Here is the thing, and then I'll get back to Einstein. Here's the thing. Because the camera and the light are right next to each other, when the light goes down, it looks warped on this, on this table. But because the light follows the exact same path up, it exactly unwarps. And that's why it looks perfectly rectangular over there. Make sense? OK. When you say a projection in mathematics, let's say there's a bunch of x, y, z points. If you just ignored the z, and you just considered the x and y points, that would be the projection that's over here. Make sense to everybody? OK. Here's what he said. I'll repeat it. He said that there's a higher dimension, and that higher dimension is curvy. And even when the ball tries to go straight, I'm going to try to make it go straight. Even when the ball tries to go straight, because because that higher dimension is curved, when you look at it from our dimension, it looks like a planet going around a star. But there is no connection, there's no rope in between the star and the planet. What would a comet look like? Here we go. Watch this. Fast and then slow. Fast and then slow. Just like a real comet. Okay, now, Newton thought it was because the gravity was stronger when you got closer. By the way, Newton's laws, you know, the laws about uh, inverse square with uh, the distance, uh, uh, the, the force of gravity, and planets uh, and Kepler's law of sweeping out equal areas and equal times and stuff like that, all of that happens in the normal dimensions over here. This is the theory of relativity. Let me tell you the second half of the theory, and that is this. Can uh, Duncan Ray, would you hand me the, the, the fabric of space-time over there? 
Here it is, the fabric of space-time. At the moment, it is flat. And so if I uh, move a, a ball in flat space, it goes in a straight line. But what if there is a star? There we go, a, 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 a red giant star. You know, we can see the curvature, et cetera, over here. But on, the, uh, on normal dimension, it doesn't look like there's any curvature or space like that. And check out, it totally looks like that is, uh, is orbiting. Now, the whole theory of relativity has two parts. Part number one, if you have a star, it bends the space-time of that higher dimension. But when you look at it from, uh, and then the bent space-time of the higher dimension is what causes the planet to take the path that it does. And when you look at it from our dimension, it looks like a uh, planet going around the star. How many people follow me so far? Okay, I'm going to do a couple things. Here it is, the gravity slingshot. I need someone to help me out with this. Would you help me, Jason? I was just going to put that over there, and I want you to stand over here so people can see, but roll the big ball like over here, and watch what happens to the little ball. Ooh. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, it's it, it slingshots it. Newton thought it was because there was that gravitational pull slingshots it. But you can see, I mean, it might be hard to verbalize, but you can see that what's really going on is this heavier mass is curving the fabric, and when the, uh, the fabric is curved, it causes the other one to roll downhill in. Here we go. Hands up. Hands up. If I were to go and put a ball in, and that ball... Uh, weighs in actual fact four pounds, uh, six pounds, six pounds. And it is curving the space out over there. The only thing that the space time over here knows about is that there's six pounds influencing it. If I took that six pounds and squeezed it down to a lead ball, so it was the same six pounds, but it didn't uh, take up as much volume, this part out here would be exactly the same. Things would orbit around it exactly the same. The only difference was that you could get closer to the center because the lead ball lets you get closer. It's denser. That's the only thing about uh, a denser. Does the ball go faster when it is far away like that? Or does the ball go faster when it's in close? In close. So the closer you can get, the faster the ball will go. If I made this into a neutron star, and so my six pounds was like a BB, it would be almost like you're pinching the thing like that. But out here, six pounds to six pounds, it would be exactly the same shape. So you don't get sucked into like a neutron star. It's just that you can get closer to a neutron star. That's really the difference. Supposing I went and I took this six pounds and I squeezed it, squeezed it, squeezed it. I'm going to lift this out for a moment. And Thank you. And squeezed it so much that that same six pounds was like a dot. But out here, it would be no different. That's what a black hole is. So I'm going to try to show you now. Everybody lift your hands up. I'm almost ready. I'm almost ready. This and gravity waves. Okay, here we go. Watch on the screen. As the, uh, because the black hole is in there. When it's out here, it's not getting sucked in. It's no different than a, a six pound big ball. It's just that it gets faster and faster and faster as you get closer and closer. And things can only move at the speed of light. So when it goes faster, 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 faster. It got sucked into the black hole. It's going from our perspective, it is gone. It is gone. How many people understand what I'm talking about? Okay.
Here we go. I'm going to see if I can do this. Yeah. Gravity waves. Okay. Yeah, let me have that green, uh, the green one again. This will be good. If I have um, uh, a star over there, so you can't see the curvature here, but here you can see the curvature, and it's going around. The only thing that influences the motion of this ball is the part of the fabric that touches the ball. Now, the fact that the, the star pulls on the fabric or warps space-time, and that piece of space-time pulls on the next piece of fabric, which pulls on the next piece of fabric, which pulls on the next piece of fabric. That's how Einstein got rid of the idea of action at a distance. Each of these squares is curved and shaped the way it is because the next one over pulled it down. Make sense to everybody? Okay, so if this ball were going around like that, and let's say that it crosses this square over here, and that square is, is sort of tilted like that. So I'm gonna put my finger on the square to watch. If I were to move this over here, that square changed its, its orientation. Can you see that? And if I were to move that over there, it changed its orientation again. So the location of that star will have an effect on the orientation of that little square of space-time. Now check this out. If I'm watching this and I go back forth, back forth, back forth, this one goes dun dun, dun dun, make sense? But it doesn't happen instantaneously. It takes some time for this part of the fabric to know what happened. So if I just go do, how long does it take for it to do there. That's the speed of light. That's the transmission time for gravitational waves. And so if something is doing back and forth like this, that means the fabric is doing back and forth like that and like that and like that. That's what a gravity wave is. A gravity wave is the ripple of changes in space-time as it moves out from the star. Make sense to everybody? That, I think, is very cool. Now, what I want to show you right now is I'm thinking about it. I feel confident in what I just said. This next part I just thought about like two or three nights ago, and I do not know if what I'm about to say is correct or not. Can I borrow that one more time? It's great having you in the front row. <laughs> if I take a look at this book, uh, and I'm just going to do it like over here. So there's one, two, three, four, five squares. One, two, three, four, five squares are of, of distance. That's how you would measure distance in the normal uh, geometry. If I tilt this like this, look at that. It's only covering one, two, three squares over there. You can see it over here because it's on a tilt. You see? And so it's so that means the way that you measure distances is, uh, is by counting squares. So if something in the higher dimensional space-time goes like that and goes like that, it will look like it gets shorter and then longer. D does that make sense? <laughs> Can we make sure you get Sherry on the, uh, on the video over there? Okay. <laughs> um, and so what do they measure at LIGO? They measure the distance getting shorter and longer. This, there is excess radius when you have, in the same way that you, know, you can tilt this and, and it gets shorter and, and longer, if you were to actually go to a black hole and measure the event horizon and figure out by regular geometry what the distance to the center ought to be, if you actually measure that distance, it's longer. It it, you can fit more rulers in when you go to the center of a black hole than you would predict. You would actually get excess radius. Watch, watch how this, because it's bending, Look at that. You see how the ruler starts at one distance and as it gets closer, look at that, look at that. You see how the ruler is doing what it's doing, getting shorter and shorter? Can, can you see? Yeah. That's, 
according to what I read from uh, uh, Richard Feynman, on the real Earth, according to the equations of relativity, there's an excess radius of one and a half millimeters, so not much. For the sun, if you did the predicted uh, radius and then actually measured it, there would be an extra half a kilometer. And Dimitri, can you show the deal with the, the light path? But as the tape goes through, it will lay down flat and it just feels the space. So now I'm, this, I usually use masking tape that I know is a little wider so it always stays flat. This is a, this is a light ray. Uh, it, is, it, it just feels the presence of that space. And as it you know, goes, it's moving in that, it's always think it's going straight through space. And you can see that it actually curves. To summarize, Newton thought that gravity worked because, like a string, like there was an attachment between the sun and the planets. Because if that weren't there, they'd go flying out but couldn't figure out what this was. And Einstein said, I'm gonna start from scratch because the only thing that I know for sure is the path of the planet. Is there another way to get that same path without having a string attached? And his answer was in the higher dimensional space because the space itself, he said space time, in the space itself was curved, when you're trying to throw it straight, the space itself, the planet thinks it's going straight, but it's curvy, and when you look at it from our normal dimension, that's why it looks like a planet going around the star. Make sense to everybody? Yes.